So in this exercise, we're having a look at Affinity Publisher from start to finish, basically, and asking the question, is it for me? Now, this is not a how-to exercise, but a do I need it exercise. Lots of people I see in the Facebook groups are asking, what can I use Affinity Publisher for? Is it for me? Well, let's have a look right through Affinity Publisher from start to finish. Now, section one, let's do an interface tour. This is what you see when you first start it up. Getting to grips with the tools, personas, that's the two, three or so different formats you can use. Options and panels and learn how to customize your workspace and find the keyboard shortcuts. So this is getting to know the software in version 1.9. Now, you won't know the difference between 1.8 and 1.9, it's mostly under the hood. And although this look at Publisher is using the beta 1.9 version, it's due for release sometime in 2021, so it doesn't really matter. It all looks the same. Now, open a document, and we can see the user interface. And here you have, these are the personas, that's Publisher, Designer, and photo. If you have all three apps installed on your computer, these become accessible to you without actually leaving Publisher. You can use Designer or Photo to modify images and designs and different things like that. There's your left hand side user interface, moving, cropping, uh, picture frames, the pen tool, lettering, um, text frames, columns and margins. These are your pages, that's a master page, master page there, and these are your ordinary pages, if you like, page one and two, page three and four. That's a view of that page there, that's page one and two. There's your controls over the right hand side, and so on. Now let's move to the next one and have a bit of a better look. So there's your toolbar. There's your menu bar, right from the top, Affinity Publisher, and your different options you've got there. There are your studio panels. They're called studio panels, and there's different, there's layers, characters, paragraphs, text, and so on. And up there there's colors, swatches, stroke, different things like that. There's your status bar. Don't forget to look at your status bar. You will find in Publisher that Quite occasionally, uh, very important controls pop up down there. They're, they're minuscule. They're very hard to see, but there they are. Maybe they'll fix that one day. There's your tools panel, all the different tools you can use to achieve your desired ends. And the context toolbar. If you've got a tool selected, then the various contexts associated with that tool will appear there. And at the moment, because it's just a document view, You've got the spread and the document set up there. Now that's the end of that section. Nice little view of the ocean there. Section two are the core skills. Now master the essential techniques you'll need to create stunning documents from brochures to novels. And that's what Publisher is. Publisher's not for design, although you can design book covers and things like that with it. Core skills are those needed day to day in your workflow, such as opening documents and templates, creating pages, design aids, object control, working with text, adding picture frames, adding content, textiles, accessing glyphs and special characters. They're those uh, zaf dingbats that you see sometimes, glyphs and special characters, and previewing your work before you send it to print. And you can see an example there. There's page three and four, all the elements lined up. Now, continuing with core skills, opening documents and templates. Publisher allows you to open previously saved documents. Ta-da! There's a whole list of documents there. Open. And a key feature of the Affinity product range is the ability to seamlessly open any Affinity project file in any Affinity product. That means Publisher can open Designer and Photo. Photo can open Publisher and Designer. Uh, designer can open Photo and Publisher and so on. Regardless of the Affinity product it was created in. In doing so, 
you can enhance your design with another Affinity product's features with no concern over file compatibility on saving. That's where those personas come in handy. If you need to tweak a photo, you just dodge into the photo persona, fix the photo and back into Publisher. To open a document, do one of the following. From the File menu, click Open. Double click anywhere in the empty view. Only available when no other documents are open, of course. Select the file you want to want and click Open. To open a recently used document, from the File menu, Open Recent. So you can see that's fairly similar to most other programs. So you won't get lost. Opening Affinity Designer Documents. On opening an artboard based Affinity Designer document and publisher, you'll be presented with its artboards. To convert them to spreads, select Convert Artboards to Spreads on the Pages panel. The resulting spreads will work like any other spread and match the original artboard's dimensions. So you can uh, have, have something designed in, public, in uh, Designer and pull it into Publisher and convert it to a Publisher document. After converting a document, save it as a new Affinity Publisher document. So you've done something in Designer and you think, that's really nice, but I need that in Publisher. Go into Publisher, pull it in and convert it. It really is that easy. Document templates. Anything that you make, any design that you do, any document that you create can be saved as a template. So, for example, you might have created that brochure and you, you know you're going to make other brochures, not like that one maybe, not that company, but other companies' brochures, but you like the design, save it as a template. And that way you can bring it in later and with minimum effort just convert it to the new project. Pages and master pages, again, there's our master pages and our ordinary pages. At Document Setup, you can create pages and spreads for your document. Pages in your publication will be presented individually by default and can use a portrait or landscape orientation. So as soon as you get started, you're creating pages. That's what, that's what Publisher is. The very name Publisher indicates that you're working with pages. And there's some instructions that you can follow if you want to uh, use the trial version and create some pages. Create a document, and I've selected B5, you can see there. There's all its measurements over there. They're the default measurements. You can change those and create a custom document if you like. And you, once it's created, you can uh, alter them by selecting them in the drop-down menu. Now design aids in core skills, we're still in core skills. Snapping to frames, snap to text frames, picture frames, shapes and curves, snap to grids. That means, if you're not aware of it, if you've got some an image, for example, you're trying to put in place really accurately in a, uh, in a frame, snapping to the frame means as soon as it gets close to the edge of the frame, the image will snap to it and, and align itself perfectly on that frame. And there is lots of other design aids there, wrapping, defaults, personas, um, pinning. You've got a world of design aids built in, including ruler guides and column guides spreads origin reposition from ruler intersection create ruler guides in any measurement unit or by percentage multi-column guides with gutter control so multi-columns with the distance between each column accurately measured now baseline grids are absolutely necessary for cartoon creation um, as you might have seen in, in um, some other videos that I've got and you can use them in entire documents or specific frames or tables. Baseline grids mean you can line your text up across a page. And various controls to hold that. 
and layout grids. You're probably familiar with grids already because grids exist in just about every piece of software around these days. You can change the color, um, snap to grid for accurate layout and create standard square and rectangular grids. Very powerful tools. Great for lining up your documents. You can select various constraints. Select the edges, object edges to be constrained, dedicated constraints panel for scale and anchor control, and so on. Very powerful. Page rotation. Maps to popular graphics tablets and keyboard controls. So depending on what you're using, you can you can you can rotate your page to fit what you're working on. There are miscellaneous design aids. And assets for easy access to stored page elements. Dedicated panel for assets storage. Now assets are things like pictures of trees, pictures of buildings, those small icons that you see like those. On the right hand side there, those little images would be kept in the assets studio. And you just drag them onto the page and drop them and there they are. And you can import and export assets. So if you make a whole collection of assets or you buy a whole collection of assets, you can import them and export them if you like. Object control. You can group objects, nest objects, and convert objects to layers and resizing. And as you can see, this is still on core skills. And working with text. There's some text there, nicely laid out. It's in a text frame. There's more text there. Text objects contain both character and para paragraph elements. All text types have quick access settings on the context toolbar. The context toolbar, if I had some text highlighted, would be up there. The unique features of artistic text, frame text and path text are discussed in the artistic text, frame text, text on a path and shape text topics. Picture frames, that's where you put your pictures. There's a picture frame, it's a place marker on the page and then you can come back through your document and insert your pictures into those frames and you know that they'll be exactly where you want them. You can place embedded or linked files inside the frame. Now that's quite an important object, embedded or linked. If it's embedded, it sits in the document itself and wherever you put the document, those images go with it. If they're linked, the images stay in their own folder and when the document is open, they're linked into it. That has implications if you move that document somewhere else. Just remember that if you send your document to somebody else and the images are linked, you would have to send the images with the document. Adding content, you can create sections. Just like the chapters of a book. Keeps everything neat, keeps everything tidy. Let you delimit your publication logically by content type or subject matter. Text styles. You can change the style and it's much more complex than that. Text styles can be applied to text using the text styles paragraph or character panels. There are lots of options there. Accessing glyphs and special characters. There's some examples there. And that's the end of that section. Let's have a look at page design principles. Again, we're still on publisher, of course. Learn some basic principles to adopt when laying out your pages in Affinity Publisher. 
You've got structure, voice and message, balance, object control, consistency, impact, emphasis. These are all good design principles. So if you want to know what you're doing and, and really hone your skills, find some little courses on design principles. For example, wide margins, white space, contrast, large text and small text, different size images, and social points. Now structure, I won't read through all this, otherwise you'll get very bored with my voice if I do that. You can pause the um, video and you can read that. In short, a good page composition should be both pleasing to the eye and communicate those key messages clearly to the intended audience. Voice and message. Regardless of whom you're communicating with and at what level, your voice remains the same. That's the voice that the document's written in. Balance on a page. Balance is a principle of design that places elements on the printed page or website so that text and graphics elements are evenly distributed. Consistency. You can see that text there is not consistent. That text there is. Multiple fonts and shapes and styles, inconsistent text on a page or design elements make such documents very difficult to read. Impact. Impact is to enable emphasis of your message. That's quite an impactful picture, you will have to agree. Emphasis. Design principle of emphasis used to either make certain elements of, the, of a design stand out. Contrasting colours. There's a couple of elements there standing out. De-emphasis. That one is much more obvious than that one. <laughs> I strongly advise you to pause the video and read these. Otherwise you'll have me talking endlessly and you'll get bored witless with the sound of my voice. An alignment you can see there is quite important. Typography is really important. The typeface you're using. Even a basic understand, understanding of each of these elements can revolutionise any design project. Now, the next section coming up is professional projects. Follow the complete design project, process of four classic professional projects in the workbook or links to downloadable resources that are provided therein. If you've got the workbook, but there are resources, there are professional projects right there on the splash page of, um, of um, Affinity Publisher. You can download them and look at them, open another document and rebuild them in your own document. Press Ready Brochure, a trifold brochure. There's certainly one of those on the front page. <coughs> And it shows you step by step how to go through them and design them. Project 2, a magazine from scratch. Another one. That there's one I designed myself. Publish digital and print fashion lookbooks. Now a lookbook is something you look through and look at all the fashions. Shows you how to do those. 
create a standout CV or resume. The end of that section. Creative projects. You can. This is where you can design a book. Reinvent a classic children's book. Design an eye-catching book cover with renowned illustrator Steve Simpson. Now that's in the publisher workbook. And if you haven't guessed it already, these sections are the various chapters out of the workbook and mostly the things that they cover. You also get to make a print-ready large format film festival poster. And the last section, corporate publishing projects. And it covers brand guides, stationery and annual reports. Now the emphasis I'm trying to show you here in this video is what Affinity Publisher is doing. It's creating books. It's creating brand guides, stationery, annual reports, brochures, lookbooks, fashion magazines. You don't use it to modify your photography. Um, you don't use it to do these designs to start with, although you can, if you've got the three elements there, you can design a book cover quite successfully in Publisher. And in fact, I've got a video doing just that. But I wouldn't attempt anything else in Publisher because that's not what Publisher's for. The name Publisher determines what you can do. Now the, the uh, workbook, the Affinity Publisher workbook, has a shortcut cheat sheets in the back. That is, keyboard shortcuts. They're also available from the help file, which is where that came from. If you open Affinity Publisher, click on the question mark up in the top right hand corner, you will see a section on keyboard shortcuts. Very useful.